everyone. I just wanted to welcome you all to our um, webinar today, IEP meetings, preparation and participation. Um, we're going to give everybody a few minutes to kind of get started and, um, and then we'll start the show. We know it's kind of dinner time and everybody's kind of getting everybody ready for the rest of the evening. So we'll give everybody a few minutes to join us. Hi everyone, if you're just joining us, we're just waiting for more people to be able to sign on, giving them time to kind of get their families situated and, and ready to go. So we'll start here in a few minutes. Okay, we're going to give it a few more minutes and see if anybody else signs on. We want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to join us. Got a few more people, so we'll give it a few more minutes. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. I know everybody has things they need to get going on this evening, so we'll go ahead and start things off. Um, I wanna welcome everybody and wanna start off by saying thank you for being here. I know there's a lot of things going on with your families and there's a lot of um, preparations for school starting. And so we want to just thank you for taking the time out to um, listen to our webinar and be here. Um, we know um, that we're in challenging times with all the devastating wildfires happening across Oregon and our hearts are, um, go out to all the families and the communities across Oregon. We know that this is a sacrifice to be here, so we thank you for that. My name is Whitney Trost, and I am one of the family resource specialists here for FACT. So if you call in at FACT, I'm um, one of the main ones that you probably get to talk to. Um, whether that's good or bad, I'm not sure, but that's what it is. Um, I'm joined today by my friends and my colleagues. Um, 
Uh, Diana Hansen, I'm not sure she's able to make it. She had some family things going on, but if she is, she's our um, Central Oregon Program Coordinator. And Heather Olivier um, is our Southern Oregon Program Coordinator um, and today's presenter. So I wanna start by sharing a few uh, webinar um, housekeeping um, pieces of information, just so you guys know kind of how things are gonna go. Um, everyone's mics are muted, so if you have any questions throughout the training, you can submit them through the question and answer bar down at the bottom, it says Q&A. And if you don't know what the, the navigation bar at the bottom, I'm not gonna lie, I had no idea that was called a navigation bar, so it's that black bar at the bottom. Um, and it literally says Q&A, so that'll be there. And then we'll do our best to answer them throughout the webinar, unless it's relevant to answer them during the webinar. Um, and the chat function will be turned off, but we will open it throughout the presentation to hear from you. So we'll be asking some specific questions and then you can um, reply in there. Um, this webinar is being recorded, so if you miss something or need to leave early, you will be able to watch it, uh, watch this on our website and I think on our YouTube channel as well. So you'll have lots of opportunities to see this again, and I recommend that you look at it several times because there's going to be some really great information that you may not be able to absorb tonight, but you can do that later. Um, immediately following this presentation, you'll be asked to complete a survey. Please take three to five minutes to complete it. This helps us to continue to bring relevant information and quality quality information on special education services. So it really helps us to understand what families are looking for and what really works for, um, for families as far as information so that we can continue to do this great work. Um, you will receive a follow-up email uh, with the links to everything we talked about in today's presentation. You'll be able to access the PowerPoint as a PDF. Um, our our 2020-2021 school year special education toolkit which is amazing and has some really great information in that and, and helps for kind of preparing for this crazy year of school and information on how to access one on one support from fact Oregon. So all of our contact information will be there. So that'll be in the email that will come after the, the webinar either probably tomorrow. You'll see that. So um, with that, um, we wanted to start with a quick poll. So we kind of have an idea of who's with us tonight. Um, and so I'm going to launch that poll really quick. And so this is kind of giving us an idea of who is attending this webinar. So I'll give you a few minutes to um, do that if you can kind of fill that out and then we'll see who we have with us. We'll give you guys a few more seconds to do that and get that finished up. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end that and then I will share results. So it looks like we have um, a lot of or a couple parents and foster parents, which is awesome. Uh, professionals learning some information on how to help students. So always love that. Um, and um, and educators, which, you know, is amazing because there's a lot of information that um, I know families don't know that you can share with families if they don't uh, aren't able to see this webinar and you can also share this webinar. So that'll be great um, information. And let's see about the other thing. So which age group is your child or person or people you work with? So it looks like we've got kids zero to five. So we've got some early childhood and we have some elementary school kids from age um, five to 11, middle schoolers, high school and transition. So it looks like everybody is really represented, which is awesome. Um, and I know my son's in transition right now. So I, I love that this information is being shared and Take it from me, hearing it once is not enough. So um, I'm excited to be able to see it tonight and then be able to access it as many times as I need to. So with that, I will stop sharing the results and I will turn the time over to Heather to start our presentation. Thanks, Whitney. This is Corey. Oh, Corey. Sorry. <laughs> nope, you're fine. Heather and I pulled a switcheroo at the last minute. So absolutely no worries. Heather's actually going to be supporting by answering questions in the back end. And I will be presenting today. 
um, just because we didn't think you'd want to see um, either one of us two days in a row if you happen to be in last night's webinar. So we did a switcheroo today. Um, I just want to start by being 100% real. Today was the first day of comprehensive distance learning for my family in our school district. I have four kids currently in enrolled in comprehensive distance learning. Um, just like many of you, from what I'm hearing, we had school district technical difficulties and all four kids um, had check-ins at the same time. So uh, cheers, I'm drinking a cup of coffee. It's time to relax. So if you've got your cup of coffee or a glass of wine, or your hot chocolate, or, or maybe you're just drinking your water because it's the first time you stopped today. Thanks for being here um, and just know that I'm, I'm with you. Uh, you are here for the IEP uh, meetings, preparation and participation. So we're gonna be talking about IEP meetings and ways for you to prepare, especially in this unique school year, and then what your participation might look like. For those of you who do not know um, what we do at FACT Oregon, FACT Oregon is the PTI, the Parent Training and Information Center for Oregon. We are able to provide families and communities and professionals uh, support in understanding special education uh, and trainings and workshops, much like this webinar or the recorded ones you might watch later. Uh, we also help with person-centered planning and one-page uh, profiles. We'll share out information as we get it. And then as Whitney um, highlighted earlier, and for any of you who've called, you might've talked to Whitney, we also have our one-on-one -on -one support line where you can call and talk to another parent. So I think that's what's so um, awesome about this is that when you call and talk to us, just like you heard from me, you will be talking to somebody else who is navigating special education. They may be a little farther in their journey, maybe, um, their uh, child is in transition age and going through a transition program like Whitney, whose son is a few years older than mine, um, or maybe there'll be someone who's just walking alongside. I also have a sixth grader this year who transitioned in with a, uh, special education services. So, you know, um, we're all in it together and we appreciate you taking the time to be here and we're here to help in whatever ways we can. We do receive funding through the Office of Special Education Programs through the U.S. Department of Education, so federally funded, and then also through our partners at the Oregon Department of Education to be able to bring these uh, webinars and trainings to families for free. Before we really dig into IEP uh, meetings and preparation, I want to make sure that we're just grounded in a few things. And it can feel really overwhelming when things are happening so fast. But IDEA and special education services have not changed just because we're in comprehensive distance learning. So the services and the supports for your child or the children that you work for or work with might have. But the expectation under IDEA to provide special education services and a free appropriate public education has not. So what does that mean? Some things to remind you. Special education services this year will look different. There is no, nothing that we can do about that. This year is a different year. They will look different. So how do we take knowing that it will look different and apply that to be sure that our children are receiving services appropriate to their IEP, right? Number two, you are a critical member of the IEP team. In fact, I might say after having kids home during the spring, you have a lot of valuable information to share about what works during this comprehensive distance learning time from what you learned in the spring around what was working then and maybe what wasn't working. You are an important member of the team and your opinion matters, your input matters, and remember you're your child's number one fan and advocate. So you know them better than anyone else. That hasn't changed. It's still important to prepare your parent input and your one page profile. So um, if you have the little hand button, feel free to put your hand up if you want to tell me that yes, you've created a one page profile before, if not, you should go check out our webpage. I have to tell you, um, 
personally, the one page profile and my parent input changed the trajectory of special education services and my son's education completely. These tools are valuable and we can help you figure out how to develop and what kind of information to share. But if you've created one and you have a good story, raise your hand because they're really, really cool. Important to share with your IEP team or your child's IEP team any regression or any loss of learning that might have happened from the spring and to be talking about how you'll be addressing that this year within the learning year of 2021 through your child's IEP, right? Any compensatory or recovery services are really meant to address that possible loss as a result of the exceptional circumstances for that pandemic or the pandemic that we're still in. So just keeping that in mind, talking about your team and really trying to partner and say, how are we going to um, provide what we need to right now? It's also important to decide how is your team going to be navigating progress notes? So often in your IEP, it will say how your child or how you receive progress notes on how your child's making progress towards their goals. But if they're at home learning, how is that progress being taken? So how will you know if they're making progress towards their goals? That's going to be something that's really important to make sure you talk with your team about. And then last, and I think probably the most important is that you're not alone. I said it at the very beginning, and I just wanna say it again. Um, if you're feeling a little frazzled, you know, clank the coffee cups because um, this week, I think we're all learning that. Teachers, admins, parents, and students. So give yourself a little grace. Remind yourself that you have um, a, a large support system and that fact organs here and if you need to, to figure out what that looks like for you and your family go ahead and give us a call because we'd love to talk to you so I'm going to go ahead and move into a little bit about the IEP before we dig into kind of those procedures and processes and the nitty-gritty I just want to remind you relationships really matter so cultivating a relationship with your child's IEP team and looking at how are we going to partner and come together and asking those questions. How do we do this? Not how will you, how do I, but how do we do this? What does this look like? Because those relationships and cultivating, those are the people who are working with your kids. Those are the people who you'll be reaching out to when things are going really well and you want to celebrate and when things maybe need to be adjusted. So that relationship is really, really important. And then also we're all in a learning curve. So um, as I said, technology didn't work out perfect today. We needed to be able to be kind of responsive to that and we're in a learning curve. So um, that's not different for our kids. It's not different for our teachers and that's not different for us. So when you're talking with a team, recognize that this is something that we're all learning together and we're really wanting to build those skills, strengths, and services in a way that's collaborative. So just like I mentioned before, IDEA says that parents are vital team members. So important that it actually calls out and requires that parents of a child with a disability be given the opportunity to participate in meetings. That hasn't changed just because we're, we're participating in a hybrid or in comprehensive distance learning. You are still a valuable team member. And like I said before, you've learned from the spring, right? I definitely learned from the spring. Uh, I don't know if anyone's schools use Google Classrooms. That was like the first big tech thing that I realized I needed to get some learning done. So um, I learned from the spring and I learned what helps and what maybe wasn't working so well for my kids in the spring as well. So you're a really, really, really valuable member of that team and it's important for you to be able to participate and the team is still expected to invite you to IEP team meetings. A lot of times there's questions about remote meetings. What does um, IDEA say about remote meetings? Can they be held over the phone? Can they be held virtually? The answer to that is yes. 
So if your school district is not holding IEP meetings in person, they can still request or you can still request an IEP meeting that allows for the meeting to be remote. So when conducting, and what it really says is alternative means of participation. So when conducting IEP meetings with placement, the parent of the child with a disability and a local education agency may agree to use alternative means of meetings such as video conferences and conference calls, okay? So it's really important to know that that can be one mode. Now, if you might need an accommodation to participate in a remote meeting, then it's really, really important to let the team, the IEP team know that you're going to need the accommodation in order to participate meaningfully within the IEP meeting. All of those same standard IEP meeting uh, rules from before COVID-19 and the closure and comprehensive distance learning, those are still the same today. So the team members still need to be there, right? Parents must still be invited. The only change to the IEP meeting is the location of how or how the meeting is being held, right? Virtually conference call. But the rules of the IEP team have not changed. So who should be there? The team members, all the required team members must be there unless you excuse them, okay? That's not different. And I even encourage right now in this time of distance learning, if you're doing a Zoom call, have your child participate and share some things that work or maybe don't work. Have them be a part of what this looks like for them, okay? And then it's an important part of sending your parent input. So your parent input right now is more important than ever. If you um, watched any of our videos or our YouTubes from the spring, you might have heard us talk a lot about logging or keeping track. If you didn't, and I have to be honest, I wasn't as great as I could have been about logging um, and journaling what was happening but I did have some notes that were um, really important that needed to be captured. So come to your IEP meeting prepared to share that. We often send in our parent input a few days to a week ahead of time. We say something like, I look forward to the IEP meeting and really talking about the services and supports for my child's name. And then I send in the um, parent input. Here's some concerns and here's some remedies. We're going to show you some examples and talk a little bit about that later. So what do we do when we prepare for a meeting? Well, some of this is not going to be different whether it's virtually or whether you're in person, right? The first thing you want to do to prepare for your meeting is to prepare your parent input and send it to your IEP team. Well, what is your parent input? Where are you getting that information? Well, it might be from information you logged in the spring. It might be from things you remember that worked or didn't. It might be from areas of concern you have now. So you're really gonna wanna share that ahead of time so that the team can come together and really say, what are we gonna do about this? You'll also need to decide with your team whether or not this is going to be in person, Zoom, over the phone. I would say um, having done meetings in all of these different platforms, the phone call, like a conference call, um, is probably the hardest one to um, be involved in an IEP meeting. Although if that's the option, then that's what you'll wanna do. And you'll just wanna set up your guidelines. And we're gonna talk about what that might look like if your meeting's virtual or via conference call. But really thinking about what's the way that I can participate meaningfully and really share input with my child's team and then determine what that's going to look like. Any meeting materials? So oftentimes people can ask for a draft copy of the IEP prior to an IEP meeting. This is not a final copy and actually if you remember IEP meetings can be called at any time so the IEP really is able to change as often as needed to. Although I'd say if you're having to change an IEP often, you probably need to sit down for a longer conversation. But you might ask for uh, test results. So if somebody was doing evaluations 
and you wanted to see what those evaluations said, you might ask for a copy of your child's IEP or progress notes. So if there's going to be some information you feel like you're missing or you would like to look at prior to this IEP meeting, feel free to request that from your team, recognizing that those are all drafts and not every school district or every IEP team has a draft ready. And then last, ask about your meeting norms. What's that going to look like? Who does the introduction, right? Will we go around the room and share? How are we going to interact with each other throughout this norm, this meeting? Recognizing that we want to have healthy team dynamics, recognizing we want to be collaborative, recognizing we're wanting to build healthy relationships, and we all might be coming with a variety of perspectives, knowledge, and information. And sometimes um, those things feel a little bit hard to navigate all together. So thinking about how are we going to set some parameters or norms within this meeting. I'm going to take just a second, grab a drink of coffee. So we talked a little bit about logging in the spring, right, and what kind of things you might log. Well, if you're thinking about what you might share with your team, you might go back to a log and think about, well, what did I log? What were the things I was talking about, right? And so here's some examples of ways that you could be logging information. Things to be thinking about before. What were those obstacles that happened? Maybe thinking about the things you're gonna start logging now so that you're ready for that IEP meeting that's coming in the future, right? What's working right now? So you're thinking about how often are you talking to the school or the IEP team? What was happening? If you reached out, why? What kind of obstacles or barriers were happening during the 2021 school year? I can tell you for me, I'm working from home. I have four kids and they all were trying to get on at the same time, which also happened to be in the middle of my work day. So that's a barrier. So I've got to figure out what that looks like and where we can get some support through our child's IEP team, right? What kind of things did you work on? What kind of things was your child working on? So were they working on their math? Were they working on electives? Were they working on social engagement opportunities? So what kinds of things did your child do or were they doing? I know um, during this time, some people were setting up um, Zoom calls with friends or with family. So those are all times that your child was still engaging if they were participating in some social interactions. What did you notice within that time, right? And then what worked and what didn't work? So did it work to have a break? Do we need to have fidgets? Maybe the material isn't accessible because it's all online and we don't have internet or I don't have a printer to print. So what things didn't work and what things were working, right? And then last but not least, really, I don't know if I can emphasize this enough, if I can share this enough, please give yourself a break. I, um, again, real talk around midnight last night, felt like I was going to have a little mini, um, a little mini breakdown. I was try I couldn't figure out what my kids' schedules were. I couldn't figure out how to navigate times. I was feeling pretty overwhelmed. And so I really needed to take a step back and think about like what's the absolute worst thing that could happen? And if it happens, will that be okay? And so I just cut myself that slack and said it's gonna be okay. I need to get a good night's sleep. So you know what? If my kids missed a Zoom this morning, and I think they all made it, I was working. Um, so I think they all made it just fine. Um, nope, I, I'm lucky to have a partner who's home right now who's been able to help, and he'll be going back to work soon. So um, it will be challenging. So when those things happen, I just need to be real about what that looks like for our family. Right, and then be able to say, gosh, today was really hard. Tomorrow's a new day and we'll try again. 
If you're not sure about logging and you're thinking, I don't have time me to sit down and log everything for four kids, it doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to take a long time. So if you use a phone, you can use a phone app, like a, a phone app for um, recording or notes, right? Or maybe you just have a notepad that you write down the date and you just take a quick note. Talk to Mr. Jones, who's just checking in, you know, or maybe couldn't get anything done. I had to work and the kids just weren't able to focus independently. Um, there's a lot of ways. Maybe it's on a calendar or a scheduler, right? Maybe it's your, it's your phone calendar and you just jot a note in there. Uh, you know, school went great, tough day, couldn't make it to fourth period. I mean, there's lots of ways. I know um, Heather often shares, I won't make her come and share her stuff right now because she didn't know I was gonna say this, but she's a uh, post-it, sticky, sticky note kind of girl. So um, if she ever shows it in a webinar, you can see post-it notes um, everywhere and around her desk because she puts notes, right? So it doesn't have to be um, some really uniform, strict way. What works for you? How do you take notes? How do you information bank? How does that work for you? That's what you're doing here. All important to be sharing with the team. This is all stuff to share that you knew from last year or you might be seeing from the start of this year. And then of course, you're gonna wanna share your child's one page profile. Any of you who've been to any of our FACT webinars have seen us talk about the one-page profile. You heard me share about it earlier. It really was such an impactful um, tool for my son in his, um, his own advocacy at school and his ability to really connect and share more about who he was, which made him more successful. He is a junior right now on track for graduation in a couple years. Um, and and I really do credit a lot of that to the idea that we sat down and took our time and really shared with our child's IEP team uh, more about who he was and the way that he works and what works for him and what doesn't. And we are able to really find some great supports. So you might've seen Adam. Adam will become comfortable accessing his education in comprehensive distance learning model. So um, that's one of the things that we're hoping for, right? We want Adam to feel comfortable accessing this and that he continues to have the support to make progress towards this uh, transition to the hybrid model when the school is allowed to do that. So some things about Adam that we already know. He's an avid reader. He's a gamer, so he probably has some technology uh, knowledge, right? So we already know that he might like uh, games or electronics or might have the ability to turn things on, how to schedule programs, right? How to utilize a keyboard. So we know he's a gamer. We know that he likes that kind of stuff. We know that music or self regulates with movement and quiet breaks. We know that movement might be really good for him. We also know that he wants to have friends just like we all do. We also know he wants to be included and he's part of um, his classroom. He's part of his community. We can see what makes a good day for him, right? Clear directions from his teacher. And it doesn't work to sit in front of a chair all day or sit in front of the computer on a chair all day. So what does that look like then if we're in a comprehensive distance learning? Do we need to plan breaks for Adam? Do we need to provide him with digits? So we're really thinking about how do we share that this is all part of your preparation for the IEP meeting. And it's because when you get to the IEP meeting, if you're like me, it's all gone. By the time you get there, you're emotional. Even, I've heard this from so many people, but parents, teachers, it's always a little bit different when you're in the meeting. And so it doesn't matter how great the team is or anything, it's always still feels a little bit nervous. And if you're like me, you forget. And then you get home and you say, gosh, I wish I would have said, da, 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 I, I should have said this. I often tell a story about the first time um, they asked me about my daughter's strengths and I had not created a one page profile and I did not know what to say. And so they said, well, what kind of strengths does she have? 
that amount of silence was exactly what that looked like for me in that IEP meeting. And then finally someone said, well, she sure is cute. To which I agree, not her strength though. So when you create a one page profile, you're not just thinking about it as a, a form, you're thinking about it as a tool to introduce your child in the way that you see them, in their strengths, with their hobbies, right? With their gifts and capacities, with your vision for that whole, whole life. This is a tool to help people get to know your child the way that you do, right? And then your parent input. So we talked about all that information that you might have had from logging. How are you going to formulate that in some way to share out with um, your child's team, right? Well, you're going to want to create an, uh, one, uh, sorry, parent input. So your parent input is your way of sharing things. Now remember, we're not going to be able to go through 16 or 17 things, and it might feel like there's 16 or 17 different concerns right now we really want to prioritize what are those most pressing things and we need to think about those top you know three four maybe five top pressing things and then continue to work on those other things as needed but um, we don't, it's not a page of, of paragraphs and paragraphs right your parent input is I look forward to working with a team to help uh, create a learning plan for Sam to provide him with the services and support that will assist him and our family during this historical time of the pandemic, right? So what works for Sam? Sam's really good at keyboarding. He's also really good at learning through videos and online platforms. So if we know that works for Sam, how do we utilize that so Sam can be successful during comprehensive distance learning? or in transitioning back into school whenever that time comes, right? What do we know doesn't work for Sam? Handwriting or maybe talking over the phone. So if a teacher needs to do a check-in, maybe calling on the phone isn't the most appropriate, but boy, he really does like those online video platforms. So we might be talking about a virtual check-in, right? What kind of concerns do you have? So we're concerned that Sam's increased behavior and dysregulation will prevent him from being able to return to in-person learning during the school year. Anyone else feel that? I really, really love work, but you know, I mean, the idea of, of like getting dressed and not wearing my yoga pants sometimes, that's, I, I've, I've become used to it. It's always hard to change that routine and habit. And our kids are a lot of times are the same way. So it might be a hard transition back into a school building whenever that time comes. So how might you talk about that? Some things to consider, right? We're working from home. We have a large family with multiple people accessing our internet bandwidth at the same time. I'm not so sure that my child's gonna be able to participate and have adequate internet. Maybe you live somewhere rural and your internet is not stable throughout the day all the time. So sharing those considerations with your team and then offering some input and suggestions, right? So we might limit some of our, trans, uh, our transitions because we know transitions are hard or we might support Sam with a visual schedule so he can see because we can tell that he really likes to learn through video and online platforms. It seems like he might be visual in his learning, right? Or we might provide virtual opportunities for him to see his peers and his friends so there's a lot of things and we're really just thinking about how are we sharing that information. And then of course we look forward to working with you as a team to create comprehensive distance learning during this extended closure. What about a virtual meeting? So when you're preparing for a virtual meeting, we're not gonna spend a lot of time here. There's a lot of different platforms you could use. So if, or your school might use. So if you're preparing for a virtual platform or a virtual meeting, what kind of things might you prepare for that might be different than if you were having an in-person meeting? Well, you might not be familiar with the platform they're using, so you may ask them to provide you a link for a, a run-through or a walkthrough or a trial of the platform. You might ask to join 10 minutes early to make sure that there's no 
uh, technology issues, definitely have a backup plan. If any of you have been um, online at all in the last six months, you probably all have experienced some form of technology, uh, maybe you know, shutting down in the middle of a meeting or something like that. So definitely have a backup plan if the virtual platform goes out or if you get disconnected, what's that plan look like? Do you have another date and time to reconnect? Is it a phone call? And then of course, if you need accommodations to participate, request those prior to the meeting so that they're ready the day of the meeting. So what does it look like during a meeting then? So we've talked about, you know, kind of preparing for, now let's talk about participating in, right? So some standard practices, everybody should be introduced on the team and the established roles identified. That helps you know, is everybody on the team who should be here, here? And if there's somebody who isn't there and you're not sure where they are or if someone should be there and you're not sure, you might just ask. Or if someone's there, you say, that's someone new, I don't know who you are. Hey, what's your role on my child's IEP team? Okay. You wanna review those meeting norms. So it's my understanding that you're going to let me know about you know, special factors and then I'll share my parent input. And then, right, what's your, what is your norm? What's that gonna look like? What's the flow of the meeting? Making sure that everyone has all the documents. So if you sent a copy of your parent input, you'll wanna make sure that you sent that to the whole team. You may ask the school, hey, can we make some copies? Or you might bring additional copies, but everybody should be looking at what you've sent in or should have the same um, documents that you do. And then of course, ask as many clarifying questions as you need to. Sometimes IEP meetings feel a little short and then we go home and we feel like we have a lot of questions. We weren't really sure whether or not it was appropriate or could we ask it during the meeting. Maybe we don't feel like we're the experts or we're not sure, but I would say um, I've not heard of a case manager who has said, please don't ask if you don't understand. Everybody that I've talked to wants to, I shouldn't say everybody, most people that I hear from want parents to ask those clarifying questions. They want to understand your child's IEP. So if you don't and you need to know, I heard you say uh, my child is going to have an accommodation to sit in the front of the class because X, Y, Z. What will that look like if a substitute happens? What does that look like if X, Y, Z? So you might be asking those clarifying questions, right? Let's talk a little bit about a virtual or remote meeting. Again, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here, but it's really wanna reiterate the importance of joining a meeting early and making sure that you know how to use the chat box or the camera you know, these webinars, we actually um, schedule a few minutes early and then we all get on early. We make sure our tech is working to the best of our ability and we're not tech savvy. So sometimes um, it's a little funny. I actually started this webinar an hour early on accident tonight. So, but that's why we do these things. So if you can get on a few minutes early, make sure you're really familiar with, with the, um, the virtual platform and then have your backup meeting information ready. So if it's a phone call, make sure your phone's charged. If it's, um, you know, we're gonna follow up via tomorrow, just make sure you, whatever your plan is that you've had that established and you're ready for it. What kind of questions might you ask during this IEP meeting? Now, this, there's always important questions you might ask throughout. Because we're in a current time of comprehensive distance learning, a lot of what we're talking about for thinking about this participation is around what's happening very specifically right now. But you're gonna wanna ask, where is my child right now in their present levels? Is there a need for those recovery services? Did, I, did my child show some learning loss? How are we gonna establish where my child is currently? It's also called baseline data. And um, just to put a little plug in next week, if you're not really sure how that relates, we're actually doing another webinar around kind of the goals and modifications and understanding that. So you can join us next week for that. 
Well, that's one of the things you're going to ask. Where are we at now? Right? What are the things we need to be doing? Are we creating an IEP for a certain instructional model? So are we creating this IEP for comprehensive distance learning? And we'll need to come back together if we do in person. Are we creating this to address multiple instructional modes? Are we including the transition if we do transition back to school? So you're gonna to wanna to ask those questions. What will the data look like to make sure that that progress is happening, right? So we talked about your notes. And even if you hear that the school is gonna be taking the progress notes, even if you talk and you say, gosh, because they're using X, Y, and Z educational platform, we're actually able to track progress, you'll still wanna keep some notes. You'll still wanna say how often you're maybe having to com have conversations with the team or how often you might need to support your, your child or the student or how often is it a challenge to access, um, you know, internet bandwidth. So you're still wanting to take those notes, but you certainly want to talk with your team to say, so how are we tracking progress? Where's my child? Here they are. Here's what we're working towards. How are we tracking this in, in comprehensive distance learning, right? And then what else would be important to know? So we're actually, going to open the chat now. I know I've been talking for a long time. I'm sorry. We're going to go ahead and open a chat because we want to hear from you for a minute. What other things would it maybe be important for you to ask at your child's IEP meeting? If you're a professional and either you work in the schools and you might be working with families, what kind of things can you think of that might be important for you to ask a family or a student during an IEP meeting. So the chat box is open. I'm gonna go ahead and be quiet for just a few minutes and um, let you all share in the chat. So we got one, excuse me, so we have one um, so far. Please go ahead and um, fill in in the chat. You can say all panelists and attendees so everyone can see. If you're not comfortable with everyone seeing, but you don't mind us reading it, you can say all panelists. But if something is gonna be modified, who's doing the modification and how is your child gonna be able to access it? Such a great question, right? If your child's having modifications to their work, who's responsible for that? And how is your child accessing it? Great, great questions. Go for just about one more minute, but I'd love to hear from other parents thinking about, or professionals, what kinds of things might I need to ask at this IEP meeting. You know, one of the things that I think about asking is how can I access training on some of the technology that my child might be using, right? So, or what's the expectation for me to support child, my child in learning? So I think some of those conversations are really, really important. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. If you have something, feel free to use the Q&A box to share it. We'll happily share out so other families, other parents or professionals might be thinking, oh yeah, that's a good one for me to ask. Oh yeah, that's why we open the chat to share with each other so we really can grow in our community and learn from each other. We're almost done, but I do wanna just share a few things because there is this preparation for the IEP meeting, right? That's where you're doing your, one, your child's one page profile. You're looking at your notes from the spring or maybe what's going well or not going well, creating your parent input and then there and sending in that ahead of time, right? You might be requesting your documents. And then there's this during the IEP meeting, right? You're asking those questions about um, progress notes and tracking, how are we doing this? You're thinking about, um, you know, what does modifications look like? So you're doing all these, what are our norms within our um, environment or within this process, right? How can I have accessibility if I need it to, to um, participate within that Zoom or, you know, Microsoft Teams or other virtual platform, right? So you're just thinking about all these things. There's this before prep, there's this during participation, but there's actually a really important piece that comes after the IEP meeting as well. And that is really documenting and following up with your child's IEP team meeting. So at the end of every IEP meeting that we have, I always send a follow-up email that says, thank you so much for the meeting. This is what I understood from today's meeting, right? And I outline the changes or the goals or the accommodations. So I just do a quick bullet. This is what we're changing. This is what's gonna happen. This is what we're implementing. It will start on this date, right? Just a quick recap, right? It's not a big paragraph. If you still have concerns, right? You might address that here. Gosh, we left the IEP meeting. I still have concerns about X, Y, and Z, right? Here's my input. We may need to schedule another meeting, right? But you're going to want to follow up. That's a really important piece. And it just solidifies that we're all on the same page because as we all know, um, just from being parents, <laughs> that sometimes what you think what you think you're saying is not what someone else is understanding and vice versa. And sometimes it's a language, right? Your, the, the intent is the same, but how we both use language is, it, is different. Maybe it's um, body language, maybe it's understanding of what something really means. So I think, you know, we also talk about like the word appropriate, right? What's appropriate to me might not be appropriate to you. So if something says, this child will receive appropriate um, accommodations. What does that mean? And so really just being able to make sure that how you're both envisioning, how the team says the IEP is gonna be implemented is exactly what your understanding is as well. That's an actual really important piece. And that's not just during comprehensive distance learning, it's a good practice to get into um, after all of your child's IEP meetings. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, just share a few things to think about now because I gave you a lot of information. It certainly can feel overwhelming at times to get all of this information. So I'd ask that you just take a minute and think, what, what's my maybe one or two steps, right? What's my next step? Maybe I just need to look at my child's IEP and really get a sense of what we said we were working on last year. Is that still the right thing for this year? Maybe you've not ever created a one-page profile and you've heard about it and you haven't really figured out how it works, but gosh, you know, it can't do any harm, so you're gonna make one. Maybe that's your next step. And then if you're not really sure what special education looks like, at all, maybe you need to go back and have a refresher. I have to tell you, even as a presenter, I learn new things every single time I listen to my colleagues or I attend a webinar um, through like the National Training Center. So 
I always am learning new strategies and new things. And I think it's really important sometimes to go back to and refresh a little bit because it can get lost because there's so much to think about. So maybe you want to go back and take a refresher on the IEP. You can do that on our webpage. Maybe you want to go back and look at some things from the spring. Maybe you just want to pull up our special education toolkit and really look through some of those on your time. So what's, what are those things that you do, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ask for you to, to use the chat one more time because we know this feels overwhelming, but if you kind of can take it down and think about it in one step at a time, what is that one next step for you? So the chat's open. Please use the chat and share what your next step is. Yeah, so Sarah, that's that really is it, making a one-page profile. And we have a page that has samples. Cecilia, same thing. Yeah, we have a page that has samples. So um, you can find templates. You can download the templates. You can make them yourself. There's a lot of really cool ways to make one-page profiles. There's free you know, digital art platforms. There's just so many things that you can do. And I, again, I sound a little bit like a broken record, but um, my son was not accessing public education at all. Um, and it was a really challenging time. And we were navigating mental health and developmental disabilities and was not able to participate um, in his public school. And the one page profile really was a powerful tool to help people understand him and who he is and what he likes. And he, um, like I said, is on track to graduate and he was accepted to an animation program within his career and technical center uh, within our district. So, and I really credit so much to um, just sharing a perspective of who he is that maybe his team or other um, people wouldn't have noticed or wouldn't have seen. And actually when your kids are older and they're in middle school or in high school, um, one of the things that I do is I send a one page profile to all their teachers, not just their team. Say, gosh, it's so great to meet you. I want to share a little bit about my son. And, and as he got older, he shared that for himself, right? There's something really powerful in being able to also say, like, I know what I need, and I know that we've addressed it here, so I'm going to take a few minutes for my break. So that one-page profile is, is really powerful. Thank you for sharing. Any other last shares to, from anyone that wants to share out what other things you might be doing? What's the next, kind of that next step for you? Maybe it's updating a one-page profile, right? Maybe it's not just making it. You might need to update it. I can tell you for me, I actually need to dig out my daughter's um, IEP and see what, what, uh, what we were working on. I need a little refresher on those goals, re the, the real specific goals. Feel free to share in the Q&A if you still um, want to share. We'll happily share that out. And then I just last, before we leave this evening, I really just want to share with you um, how you can reach us. So again, if you have any questions, there's so many ways to reach out. We'll happily talk via our telephone, so you can give our office a call. We'll schedule a time to call you back. You can always send an email at support, send an email to support at factorgan.org or visit our website and just look at some of the resources and say, you no, know, maybe I just need to kind of scroll through and see what, what's available and what I might need. Okay. We're really happy you'll be talking to a parent who is navigating this with you 
and is happy to help you figure out what some of your next steps might be if it feels a little overwhelming. Before we go, I wanna just give chance for anyone who didn't feel like their questions got answered or has some additional questions, please feel free to, to um, put them in the Q&A box for everyone else. I just wanna say again, thank you so much for joining us. We absolutely appreciate that you took your time and, and we hope we'll see you next week and we're gonna to continue to be doing webinars in the upcoming months and we're really excited. So keep an eye out for us to post those. Let's see, we have a question. So somebody asked my last name. So I will tell you, um, so everyone knows I'm Corey Milkey and um, I am the Mid Willamette Valley Program Coordinator. I, um, just to share while we're chit chatting, so I have two kids in high school this year, and then I have two kids in middle school. And one high schooler and one middle schooler both receive special education services. Any other questions that you maybe? Oh, Julie, can I read this out loud? So it's Corey Melky, C-O-R-I, and my last name is spelled M-I-E-L-K-E. -E. If I'm feeling spunky, it goes like this, M-I-E-L-K-E, -E, right? Um, and thank you so much. So Julie um, just sent in that she saw me tr uh, do a training in person last year and um, that she really enjoyed it. So thank you so much. Um, and we appreciate you joining us for in-person trainings. We're looking forward to the opportunity to get back to doing in-person trainings and, um, and to share you know, what we do with you and to connect with you and to see you Um, we also have a question if the session is going to be recorded and emailed. So this recording will not be a part of the email, but the, um, it will be recorded and put onto our webpage and on our YouTube. So you'll be able to find it um, as soon as we're able to get closed captioning on it and upload it. So um, we will have it and will be able to do this. If you're looking for this training, in Spanish. Um, we are also hosting the same training live tomorrow in Spanish. So feel free to share that we'll be doing the same um, training tomorrow. Our YouTube is, um, I believe it's Fact Organ on YouTube. Let me see if I can get you a link. And if we can, we can put it in the chat bar. So you can find us and subscribe and get notifications as soon as they're up. Thank you so, so much, Heather. So Heather posted our YouTube link in the chat. So everybody can copy and paste that if you want, but that'll take you to our um, YouTube. Thank you, Julie, for joining us and thank you for being here. Thank you for your kind words. Um, we definitely appreciate that. I'm going to scroll through and see if we have any last questions. Um, one last question around being able to copy. You should be able to copy this link without having to click on the link to our page, to our um, YouTube page.
I know when I search it, I just go to YouTube and in a search bar, I say fact organ and it pops right up um, and we would be the top one. And you'll see pictures of our, uh, our virtual uh, triathlon for youth. All right, I don't see any other questions coming in. I see people signing off. So uh, with that, I'd like to say good night. Enjoy your evening. Thanks for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great night, everyone.